We have discussed in detail about the free functional muscle transfer, but what happens in those patients where the free flap is not possible? So we have a few options of the regional muscle transfer as well. So for those, the popular muscles are the masseter muscle. So just like the nerve to the masseter was very popular, the masseter muscle itself is popular for the smile reanimation as well. But over here, the temporalis muscle also takes first place. So how is the temporalis muscle transferred? In the initial videos, we have seen the use of the temporalis muscle for the eye closure to replace the action of the orbicularis oculi. Here we will see that if it is not used for that, how it can be used for the smile. So usually a temporalis transfer is done with the help of a fascia lata graft or any other sling. And there are two ways of the transfer. One is a Gillies retrograde transfer and one is a McLaughlin anti-grade transfer. So here you can see is a depiction of the transfer of the muscle. Now this is the temporalis muscle which is found at the temporal fossa. So here we are going to see how we are going to transfer it. So this is a masseter also described in the same position. We are not going to see the masseter initially. Okay, so we are going to concentrate on the temporalis muscle. So if you are looking at the McLaughlin anti-grade transfer, what is done is that the temporalis muscle is taken from its insertion and via facial lata graft directly in the same line of pull. So here it is an anti-grade transfer. It is transferred to the region of the oral commissure. In a retrograde transfer, what is done is that the muscle is dissected from its origin. It is flipped over. Therefore, it's a retrograde transfer and it is passed from over the zygoma on top of it, not under the zygoma. And then it is transferred to the region of the oral commissure. Obviously, there are a lot of drawbacks is that there is a hollowness felt at the region of the donor site in the temporal region. And again, because this is a muscle of mastication, muscle of chewing, it creates some unnatural movements when the smile is to be initiated. The other muscle that is taken is the masseter muscle itself, which is again supplied by the trigeminal nerve. And then the masseter muscle can be taken by splitting it from its insertion and it can be transferred usually directly without the help of another graft. So this also creates a pull in the line of the masseter and it can help to restore the oral commissure. So masseter again as a powerful muscle as well as temporalis are usually the choices taken when the gracilis or a free functional muscle is not available and in cases where we do not have a good supply of facial nerve from the opposite side. So they do create an unnatural smile but here usually what we are concentrating on is to help provide oral competence to the patient so that the dribbling of saliva, the drooling does not take place and the patient at least has a good oral competence.